morning, good morning, and a happy new year to everybody. Um, I'm honored to be the first guest speaker at the first success day of 2018. I tried to avoid Alison, but she's very persuasive. <laughs> um, so basically, what I'm going to do, oh, I have my slides there, yes. I just figure out how to work this yoke. It's 10 years since I was up here. <laughs> Okay, now, okay, I'll go back there. Right, our journey started on the 4th of October, 1993. <laughs> and when I was putting these slides together, it really was the last century. You know, we had to go somewhere, or had to find an address. We had to use one of these. <laughs> if we were going down the country, we went through loads of these. <laughs> now, there was one, one advantage of going through one of these was, there were loads of these. <laughs> but for the younger people in the audience, that's a phone box. And it was, <laughs> and it was the only way to communicate once you left your house. <laughs> I'll tell you. It really was the dark ages. However, we joined forever initially for, for the products. I had used the products. My son had got great results from the products, I had got great results, and I wanted to buy them wholesale. I mean, that's no secret, I say that at business opportunity meetings, that's why I joined. However, I started going to meetings, and I began to see that this business could offer a solution to a problem that was arising. You see, <laughs> these are my three children, 16, 12, and six. Now, for those of you with small kids here today, <laughs> enjoy them. When they get to that age, you think you have problems now? <laughs> Wait till they get to teenagers. Um, and, but I, I wanted to be at home. I was working full time. I wanted to be at home. I wanted to be there when they came in from school. I didn't want the older lads coming into a cold house, dark house, no food there. I wanted to be at home. So in January, I decided that I would leave my job and I would work full time with Forever Living Products. What I wasn't expecting was, four months later, Brian was an engineer in, in telecom. Now, there's a two-hour stint in this. If you want to know it, ask him afterwards. Um, <laughs> but basically, there was a restructuring um, deal in telecom. He didn't come out too well in it. He was offered a, a pension plan, and he was offered a, a small lump sum. And he did what I would not suggest anyone in this room to do as a supervisor in this business. He took the pension plan, took the lump sum, and he left telecom. Right? We were supervisors. So we headed off to the States for four to five weeks. Um, my brother lived in Toronto, my sister lived in Washington. This was actually outside my sister's house in Washington. It was, it was um, 1994, Ireland had qualified for the World Cup and we were heading out there to watch Ireland play. Um, we had a fantastic time in Niagara Falls, Kings, um, Canada's Wonderland, fantastic time with the kids. We came home at the end of July. We looked at each other, <laughs> both of us had no job. <laughs> we'd spent most of the lump sum. <laughs> and we'd no sponsor either. They had disappeared, they'd left the business. Fortunately, Marion took us under her wing. Marion had sponsored them. And you know, if you meet them today, they're going to tell you this business didn't work for them. They were actually 100% successful. They sponsored one person, that was us. Right? But they'll tell you it didn't work for them. Um, but Marion took us under our wing, and Rex Mon was coming over in the October of that year. And we decided, right, we're going to be managers and be pinned by Rex. Which we were. Did you look at the status? <laughs> <laughs> now, when we joined Forever, when I was a kid, I always wanted to travel the world. I was fascinated with traveling the world. And I somehow or other figured out that if I was an Aer Lingus air hostess, I would, that would solve my problems. I could travel the world. Now, why I figured that out, I don't know. I wasn't on a plane until I was 16. But I don't know whether it was because I saw what an air hostess had to do, the work they had to do, or whether it was because I had a house, a mortgage, and a husband at 19, <laughs> and my first child at 21. That probably put the kibosh on being an air hostess. But I always had that long, and I wanted to travel the world. And it's funny, when I joined Forever, um, Paddy and Pauline had just come back from San Francisco. Marion was heading off um, with the group to, there was only one rally a year, that was the International Rally in America. And Marion was heading off to San Antonio. But it never dawned on me that we could do that. 
that was for them up there. <laughs> you know, them. Um, so it was a big surprise that in 1996, we made... <laughs> Don't worry, Marion. <laughs> I'm going to embarrass a lot of people. <laughs> And as you will notice there, if you're a cross-dresser, this is a great business. <laughs> but that rally blew my mind. It, we, we, it was two 747s privately. We never saw the inside of a, of a, um, a, a what do you call it, an airport. <laughs> um, we literally were picked up in the bus, dropped at the steps of the plane. And we flew to um, Scottsdale in Arizona. That's Brian outside head office. I was offered the job of CEO, but I didn't like the desk. <laughs> Zig Ziglar was the guest speaker there that day, and that's him getting Brian's autograph. <laughs> <laughs> we flew on down, down to, to the plantations in, in, um, down in McAllen, and we went across for a fiesta into, into um, Mexico. And then we were flown to Las Vegas. Now, when we got to the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, there was hundreds of these buttons on the lift. But one of them had BL. I said, what the hell is BL? So we pressed it, and when the door opened, we were at the beach level. And that's the beach level. <laughs> this is Vegas. <laughs> when we were in South Fork, we did South Fork Ranch. That's, there's not too many people can say they were on JR's bed. But myself and Marion were together. <laughs> The following year it was Washington, and I was determined to go to that because my sister lived in Washington. So we flew over, we brought Robert and Jenny with us, um, and we stayed with my sisters for a week before the rally, paid for by forever. Um, we had a fantastic time at the rally. That was the Route 66 party that night, and they did up people's hairs with the 1950 style. And that was a photograph that appeared in the American magazine of our Jenny. She got her hair done at, at the uh, Route 66 party. It was a group of us then, took, uh, hired a minibus. There was Julie O'Brien, Bernie, Mary and Eddie. They had, uh, Mary and Eddie had their kids, we had ours. And we headed off down to Virginia, to Paramount Studios. We did Ocean City, and there's great stories about that. And if you want to, uh, if you want to hear a good laugh, ask Brian about Bernie Allen on the roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> um, after that, I think there was Anaheim in the middle. Um, I don't know whether these photos, I couldn't find them. I don't know whether they're in the clouds or in the attic. Um, <laughs> um, there's, there's a lot of photos missing there. <laughs> um, but I know the, in 2002, we went back to Dallas. And this is Robert there at South Fork Ranch. Robert won the rodeo competition there. He fancied himself as a, as, um, a cowboy. His ex he, he was greyhounding around America with his ex-girlfriend. I took her out of the picture just because in case somebody knows her. <laughs> wouldn't be fair. And um, we met up with them there, and we had a great time in, in Dallas. We, again, you can see this was Simon and Sharon were there. You're here somewhere, guys, down the back? Yeah. That's Simon at the top of, that was in South Fork Ranch at the dining table. I don't think we were supposed to do that. But it was all set out lovely, so we, we sat down and got the picture. That's, that's Brian there with a long horn. That, <laughs> that's the animal. It's not a cow, it's not a horse, it's called a longhorn. <laughs> and we hired a bus, um, we, sorry, we hired a car. <laughs> Jesus, it's just talking of sex today. <laughs> we hired um, a car, and that's us outside the Alamo there. And again, I took his girlfriend out of it in case of... Sun City in South Africa, the same year, um, we won a competition that was run within, the, within Forever Ireland, and that was Kemi, Jimmo, a manager in our team, and Benny, two of our team. That there, Brian looks if he's enjoying himself, but he didn't get on it again after, me, after that because there's, gla there's alligators all around the outside of that with a flimsy little fence, so if you come off the, the jet ski, it could be dinner. Um, we went to a lion sanctuary at, with, there as well. We had a fantastic trip there as well. Now, then the European rally started, and I'm just going to fly through these. There was Budapest, there was Copenhagen, there was... Now, I've put up with some of these because, as I said, neither of us were working. So anything we did was with our bonus checks, okay? I have a brother who lives in Canada. I'm very close to him. He sometimes rings us. I'm coming to Europe in such and such a time. Can you meet us? Now, it's not even the money. It's having the time. I literally, give me the dates and I'll book the flights, right? And that, he was going to the Loire Valley. We hired a barge. 
four of us, we had three crew, including the chef, and we had a fantastic week on the, on the river share in the Loire Valley. But that was a button thing, a, a bu bucket list thing I wanted to do was a hot air balloon. And that was, we took a hot air balloon over to chateaus in the Loire Valley. And that actually photograph was taken from our hot air balloon. I didn't put the year here. That was my 50th birthday. <laughs> I, um, I took a long time to forgive Brian over this one. Midnight on my birthday, he presents me with tickets for five nights in New York. What he didn't tell me was the flight left at half nine the next morning. <laughs> and I was at a party. <laughs> we got there somehow. And what he didn't tell me was he'd arranged for my brother and my sister-in-law to come down from Toronto and my sister to come from Washington. And we had a fantastic five days in New York. <laughs> Stockholm in 2007. Back to the, to the, to, to the cross-dressers here. Bucharest in 2008. We actually won the Spirit Award. That was instigated by Simon Byrne. I really think you are a cross-dresser, Simon. He came up with the ideas of the kills. Um, we <laughs> Dominican Republic, I surprised Brian with tickets for an all-exclusive um, trip to the Dominican Republic for his 60th birthday, and he wanted to swim with dolphins, so I took the pictures. <laughs> I wasn't into f kissing fish. <laughs> Malaga, Forever Ireland. Oh, this was a good one. This was the manager's retreat in Brighton. And the reason I put this up was that yellow figure at the back is our new European manager for operations, Mr. Peter Boots, who was the guest speaker here in December. And the two clowns in the front who won, who won best dressed couple was Paddy and Paddy and Keegan. <laughs> just, just in case you didn't think we have fun in <laughs> with these trips. Uh, Vienna, 2011. Lake Como again. I met my brother in Lake Como. That was our, our apartment overlooking Lake Como. And we were able to, and it's not the money. It's having the time to do it. We weren't digging into two weeks holidays if we'd both been working or trying to get the time together. It was a case of, yep, what's your dates? I was just going into Bellagio in a motorboat. London, Brian, as most of you know, coaches athletics. And when London was announced for the um, 2012 Olympics, he said, we're gone. So that was us at London the Olympics. I only barely made it. I broke my foot the week before, <laughs> so I was on crutches. But again, we brought Jenny, and Robert was living in London. We got tickets for the, the London Olympics. Budapest, 2012. Hawaii. Hawaii was phenomenal. The global rally had kicked in here. This was the first one. Um, and again, it was another bucket list thing I wanted to do, was go up in a helicopter. Not only did I go up in a helicopter, we went over Hawaii, we went over Pearl Harbor, and we visited Pearl Harbor as well. Um, I, I can't find the photos of this, but it was, it was uh, forever direct. We were there for the opening of it. Uh, the Global Rally was in London. Our son lives in London. We were able to spend the whole week there, the cost of forever, uh, and we met him every night. That was Brian trying to rob Marion's. Um, chairman's bonus check. It didn't fit in his pocket though. <laughs> and even the buses, some of the buses were painted with Forever Living. They just pull out all the stops. This was another bucket list thing. And one of the things I love about this company is the friends we have met all over Ireland and all over the world. And this is a couple who were very friendly with, we got to know Sue and Alan Matthewman. They're the ADDs in um, the Midlands around Warwick area. And Sue knew I, I wanted, I love Andre Rue and it's Strauss Orchestra, and I always wanted to go for four weekends in the month. In the month of July, he does three concerts in his home square, open air concerts in Maastricht. And one of the things, some of you, if you look at Sky Arts, you'll see him. Some of you, um, I always wanted to go and see him live there. So Sue contacted me one day, she said, we're thinking of going to Maastricht, how about it, Connie? I said, yep, when? <laughs> so we, it's not easy to fly into Maastricht, so we flew to Birmingham, stayed with Sue and Alan, and we drove through the Channel Tunnel and across into Maastricht, and we had a fantastic couple of days there. And that was really, that really was on my bucket list. Again, my brother was coming to Tuscany, we hired a villa there, and we spent I don't know, 10 days, I think, driving around Tuscany. I saw so many churches, and, and I, was, I was churched out of it in Tuscany. But Brian was doing a lot of what he does best. In 2015, we qualified for Singapore and we stopped off at Dubai on the way. We met up with Sarah and Chloe, and that's at the fountains in Dubai. Uh, that was the view from our bedroom window. And this was what Amanda's talking about. See that one top left? <laughs> 
the, Ma the Marina Bay Hotel, that was the, 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 uh, that was the hotel we stayed in, and that was the David Beckham Post. And at the bottom was afternoon tea and raffles in Singapore. And there was Sinead and Gary and Marion and Eddie there. And uh, it was, that was just an exceptional trip. Bucharest, again, I went with a friend of mine to see Andre Rue live in the Alton Air Square. Um, that's Breda there. We went to that. Venice, St. Mark's Square, Lake Garda. Um, then we'd had South Africa. Um, and that was an amazing trip. And I, said, and I know there's a lot of you here were on that trip with us. Um, one of the things that's fantastic is a lot of our group, several of our group, have received chairman's bonus checks, and it's just wonderful to see these guys getting it. Some people have asked us why we haven't received, got one yet, and I, we're hardly in the country. <laughs> but we've also had a lot of challenges over the last 10 years. It's just an excuse, but you know. But it's so good to see there was Jean, there was Sinead, and Sarah, and I'm delighted to say Sarah has qualified again this year. So fair play, Sarah. I think Barbara Murray actually was on, she got a check at that one as well. I don't know where, I couldn't find photographs, but Barbara got one as well. Um, we flew from there down to, t down to Cape Town, and that's me and Table Mountain down at the, the end of Cape Hope. We spent a great couple of days there with Anne Carton, Anne and Paddy and Mary and Michael Welby. Um, that was Brian on Penguin Beach. That was last year, the Swiss Alps, we did Milan as well. That there was last year at the World Athletics Championships in London. And as, because the World Ch Athletics Championships were there, Brian wanted to go, Jenny was big into athletics. We got tickets for it. Unfortunately, I drew the short straw. I had to stay at home and work the horse show. But Brian and Jenny went. <laughs> um, the picture at the bottom is one of Brian's athletes. He's coached this company, this business has given him time to do his passion, what he loves, which is coach athletics. And that there is Orla. Orla qualified for the Paralympics in Rio. She got sixth in the final of the 100. And in the World Championships, that's him there with her. She had got fifth in the final of the 100 in the Paralympics in London. Now, there's lots of other places we've been. Toronto a few times, Florida, um, Naples and Florida, Barcelona three times. Unfortunately, Alison only gave me 30 minutes, but anyway. One of the things I did do, sorry, I've done, oh, I'm going back, sorry. One of the things I did do, if you look at the third shot glass from the bottom right, it's South Fork Ranch. That was the first shot glass I ever, bought, I ever got. And when we were getting a big new extension done in our house there a couple of years ago, I insisted on a glass case being built in the kitchen for all my shot glasses. <laughs> and at the moment, I counted them the other day, I have 122. <laughs> now, if you're sitting here and you think, well, I wouldn't get in the plane, that doesn't encourage me. And there are people like that, believe it or not. There, Forever has done a lot of other things for us. There's the three. You saw them at the beginning. That's Barry on the left. One of the things Forever did, they, they, <laughs> I suppose being around our, us with positivity and you can do it, yes, if you want to do it, we always, if it was legal, if it wasn't wrong, if it wasn't bold, we always said go for it, <laughs> right? Barry had a number of business opportunities started. He wasn't academic, he wanted to make money. And a few of them, a few of them didn't really work. In fact, we bailed him out of a few. But he's now a very successful businessman with his own business. He's got a wife and three beautiful kids, and he's a beautiful home, and I'm very, very proud of him. Robert in the middle. Robert in the middle went on. He did a, a degree in, journal, in politics, and then he carried on and did um, journalism. He's now working in CNN in London, but he's a, his passion is singer-songwriter. Check him out, Rob Corcoran Music. Um, Rob Corcoran and the Necessary Evils. <laughs> you could call some distributors that, couldn't you? <laughs> um, but he's absolutely, he's a great storyteller and a great singer and storyteller. And um, one of the things, a couple of years ago, he came home and he was, wasn't in good form. And I said, what's wrong with you? He said, I tried to, I applied for a loan in London. I wanted to hire out a recording studio and make an EP with five of my songs with the band. But he said, I was turned down for a loan. 
it was great to be able to just give him the money to go and record, get his recording studio and get his EP. And the reason we missed the November success day was um, he had just launched, that Friday night, he had launched his first full album of 12 songs. So um, I'm very, very proud of him. He's a fantastic guy. <clears throat> Jenny grew up with Forever. As a six-year-old, she used to come to trainings on a Saturday morning. Mary and Paddy and Pauline, I remember her there. She used to be colouring, writing things in. She'd stop and listen. And she's probably the most focused individual I actually know. She is an amazing kid. I call her the comeback kid. She's had so many tragedies, particularly in the last 10 years, and she just bounces back. Um, when she was about 16, she was competing in the All-Ireland. She was a great her She was a great athlete, and she had won all sorts of national ch or schools championships for the 60-metre hurdles. And the final of the All-Ireland schools championships were coming up, and it's probably after the senior championships is one of the biggest athletic championships in Ireland. And I was changing the sheets in her bed one day, uh, just a few days before it, and there was this piece of paper folded up under a pillow. So I looked at it, as mothers do. <laughs> <laughs> and she had a podium drawn on it, and three figures. And on the top, at number one was me. And second and third was her two friends. And that's exactly how it finished. Um, it's funny, when she was going to... Um, no, I'll tell you that story in a minute. She then um, won numerous championships with the hurdles. And so much so, she was headhunted head for the Irish bobsleigh team. Yes, we did have an Irish bobsleigh team. <laughs> and that's them in Innsbruck. In the fifth, they got fifth in the World Junior Championships. They got third in the Austrian Championships. They were very, very successful. But believe me, if you wanted your kids to do bobsleigh, you need to have an open checkbook. Um, the Irish Sports Council don't really pay for the training that is involved. They've got to follow the snow around Europe in the winter. And um, you've got to pay for everything, her keep, her flights, everything. So um, it was a very expensive sport, but she wanted to do it. And we said, OK, go for it. Unfortunately, the, they were on track to get to the, the Vancouver Winter Olympics. And unfortunately, the summer before, she broke her back. Now, it wasn't, ironically, it wasn't through bobsleigh. It was through wrong advice on weight training. So if you're doing weight training, be very careful. Um, it, that absolutely destroyed her, physically and mentally, because she was told she'd never compete in athletics again and she'd never do bobsleigh again. And her dream was to compete in the hurdles in the London Olympics. She wanted to be the first female to do two, two Olympics, winter and summer. And the awful thing was she had to sit through the Vancouver Olympics. My brother lived in Vancouver. We were all gone. Um, and we had to sit through, she had to sit through and watch her friend who had taken her place. Because it's only a two-man bob. Her friend had taken the, her place in, in the Vancouver Olympics. So that physically, we, we, you know, fortunately, we were in a position that we were able to get her to good doctors, get her sorted. It took about 18 months to sort her head. Her head was completely gone. And it was a horrific time in her, those two years in her life. But she came through it. Um, she, got, she came back. And um, then she got into college. No, sorry, she started working. And within a year, she'd worked herself way up to manager of Jack Wills in Dublin. Then she decided she wanted to go back to college. And I said, oh, God, she'd been, she'd been earning good money. So we said, OK, right. She got into Trinity. And she has taken seven years to do a four-year course. <laughs> she got anxiety attacks the second year. She had to take a year out. She got meningitis. She got, um, what else did she get? Oh, yeah, the doctor in Trinity, um, when she was looking after her for the meningitis and the anxiety attacks, discovered that she had a problem with her kidney, which I put down to whey protein and strong painkillers, because she wouldn't listen to us. We didn't know what we were talking about. Soy protein, they were all on whey protein. And it, one of her kidneys was at 10% function. It had to be removed. Now, the reason I'm telling this was another round of doctors and specialists, etc. But the reason, and that was another year taken out of college. But the reason I'm telling you this is, it wasn't, it's not because we had the finance. We, you know, we didn't have to remortgage our home for medical bills, etc. It was because we had the time to be there for her. When she was in hospital with meningitis, we were, one of us was always in there. When she, was at, when she came home after having the kidney removed, one of us was always there. We weren't leaving her a flask of coffee and a sandwich and heading out to work at half seven in the morning, hoping she'd be all right during the day. 
we were there. There was no way we could have worked while she was going through those couple of years of, of the thing she was in. She's bounced back. She's 30 next Saturday, Jesus. And she's, uh, it's another expensive day. <laughs> and she's, um, she will be graduating in May. So. My three kids, if you ask me, my biggest success in life was my three kids. And I have forever to thank for that because it was the way they grew up and what they grew up with and the, you know, the mindset we had. The next follows shortly by these three mon monkeys. They're my three grandchildren. <laughs> and it's funny how the circle of life goes around. <laughs> now we've another why. <laughs> it never, never stops. This is Juliana. Juliana came across about five years ago. Some of you know Kim Madsen. He's the top distributor in Denmark. Kim is an amazing man. He's built an orphanage. He's built um, a school, a boarding school in Uganda, um, where he takes the kids out of the slums in Kampala and gives them, gets people around the world to sponsor them. It's helpafrica.dk if anyone is interested in looking at it. Um, but we came across Juliana and we started sponsoring her five years ago. And uh, this was her at Christmas in her Christmas clothes. It's just Christmas just gone. This was her at her Christmas party. You can see Kim just behind there. And we were talking to her last Monday on Skype and she wants to be a doctor. <laughs> so we have a long way to go. <laughs> it's funny. This is my mom, and I nearly forgot this. Not that she's my mom, I, I knew that, but I nearly <laughs> forgot. I nearly forgot. Um, when you're, you're in forever for a while, you are, um, you kind of take things for granted. And my mom died shortly before her 94th birthday, a couple of weeks before her 94th birthday, and she loved her garden, she loved her flowers. But she was in a nursing home for about two and a half years before she ended up uh, before she died. And um, I used to go up every second day, put her in her wheelchair and take her out around the garden. There was a beautiful garden in the nursing home she was in. Um, there was a gardener there and she used to be chatting to the gardener and telling Stephanie what she should be doing. She wasn't doing it right, obviously. But, <laughs> but I, there was only one other person in that nursing home that used to get out in the afternoons. And it was, it was beautiful summer. You know, the summer's day, they were sitting in the day room. Their relations used to come up at night after work when they were all in bed. I never went. I never once went up at night. I always went up in the afternoon, took her out, and forever gave me the opportunity for two and a half years to spend that time with my mum and to be able to do that for her. <laughs> we don't face this every day. This is the office. <laughs> it's at the end of the deck. We still live in the same house. We we moved into 40 odd years ago. We've gone up, we've gone out the back, we've gone out the side, we've gone out everywhere, we've extended the garden even, um, built the office. Um, it's, it's an area on 10 minute walk from, from the seafront, on 10 minutes from the beach, on 20 minutes from here. Uh, Jenny can be into Trinity College in 20 minutes on the dart. We have fantastic neighbors. I wouldn't move if you paid me. In fact, we've 16 neighbors every year we go away for New Year's. And I regard them as my best friends, some of my best friends. So, I, you know, there's no way I would move from there. This, I'm going to make a statement here, and I firmly believe this, that I probably wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for forever living. And the fact that this lady came into my life. Some of you know her, Hilary Brennan. She's a senior manager in, in Forever. She's had health challenges. She still has health challenges, so your prayers would be welcome. But Hilary used to bully me. She couldn't believe I'd got to 57 and never had a mammogram. So eventually, to shut her up, I went and had a mammogram. I was called back in a couple of days later, come back in for a biopsy, went back in for the results of the biopsy, I had breast cancer. Um, do I have another slide there? No, I don't. I'll take it back there. So um, I went, the, it's funny, the day I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I actually went to my meeting that night. Can you believe that? And Santry, Julie Walsh will, will verify that. She asked me what was wrong with me. I don't remember who did it or what was said, but I was there. <laughs> um, I also went down to Sharon. Sharon was doing the plowing championships the next day. I went down, she nearly died when I walked in. Um, I said, I'm not sick. I said, I'm here. I said, I'd do, I'd do the plowing championships with you. Um, but I remember sitting in the oncology unit in November. I had to get radium treatment every day for six weeks. And I remember sitting there, oh, sorry. First thing, that top picture I'm very proud of. That was two weeks after my lumpectomy. 
There was no cancer going to stop me going to a forever living party. <laughs> I was in Telford at the manager's retreat. The picture below was my brother's place in Naples in Florida. We flew out there a month after I finished my radium treatment in the January. And my sister came down from Washington and we spent a great week there. And we went down to um, Key West and we had a fantastic two weeks recuperating. Now I'll tell you something, I don't believe there was one person in that oncology unit that was able to go off for two weeks after they got that treatment to recuperate in Florida. Because when I was sitting there, people were talking about having to go back to work. They had to give up going back to work because the radium treatment only takes a couple of minutes, but it wipes you out. I used to go home and go to bed. People were trying to keep their jobs going. There were people giving up their jobs in November, didn't know how they were going to pay for Christmas. One woman, I remember, had to close our business. And I remember in the middle of November sitting there, and you know, I was nearly embarrassed because my bonus check had gone up by over 900 euros. And I realized that day what residual income was all about. I thank God for forever living. I thank God for Rex Mon. I thank God for Marion. I thank God for my team. I thank God for everybody. Because I was sitting there, when you've, when you've got cancer, you have a lot of other worries. And the last thing you want is to have financial worries. And I firmly believe I recovered a hell of a lot quicker because I didn't have those financial worries. I also believe if I hadn't had that um, uh, mammogram, it would never have been found because I couldn't find it. The doctors couldn't find the lumps. So again, it was um, thanks to Forever Living. Now this was, um, this was New Year's Day in Salt Hill Hotel in Galway. 16 of the neighbours had gone down for the new year. It was the day before all the cars were swimming along the promenade. It was a beautiful summer's day. We had lunch on the balcony or on the terrace, and a friend, I put it up on Facebook, and a friend of mine put a note up underneath it, one of my neighbours actually, and she said, live in the dream. And if I had to summarise the last 24 years and forever, that's the three words I'd use, live in the dream. We've had challenges. By God, I could write a book on the challenges as we had, the, um, the personal challenges. We, we could, you know, but we were going to have them anyway. And it's a much better position to be in when you're not worried financially of how you're going to pay for things. Um, you know, if, if you have a residual income coming in and, you're, and you rec recover, <laughs> those challenges disappear a lot, hell of a lot quicker, let me tell you. Um, we've had business challenges, but we just, you just get over them. Work with the people who want to work. We've had four managers left our business, one after the other, the last August 12 months. One decided far off fields are greener and took three of our managers with her. So what? One of them, unfortunately, was an Eagle manager. She's now back working. It's, it's tragic. I remember Ralph Kipp saying, if you can't build a business and forever living, you'll never build it in any other network marketing company. So, um, <laughs> and just to finish, if I give you three top tips on having, building your business for a residual income, one is, Secure your four case credits. Make sure, I don't, it doesn't, doesn't hold water at me that you can't find, custom, you can't find customers to use toothpaste and deodorant. It just doesn't st sit with me. We are 292 consecutive months doing four case credits. And never once did we have to sign somebody in to get those four case credits. We do an average of six to 10 cases every month. We have never had to depend on signing somebody in because you just don't know what will happen. Things could happen that you just can't get out. I mean, I hadn't a headspace to go out and re recruit people into my business when I was to told I had cancer. Uh, I hadn't a headspace to go out and do product launches. So you, you don't want to depend on signing people in. Make sure you get your four case credits. That's, as, as Aidan says, if you don't do them, you're only a, a, a customer, really. Um, secondly, work as far down, build wide, but work as far down as possible. If we hadn't, we have, we've worked with Sarah's group up in Dundalk, we've worked with Kathleen and Tony down and we had three days in Kinsale, if anyone was looking in, they wouldn't say we were working, but we did. <laughs> um, and, but they're not in our pay line, but it doesn't matter. Get to know as many people down the line as you possibly can. Because we were working in, in the Midlands with a group, Four managers left. The fifth manager who was in, out of our pay line has suddenly moved into our pay line. And we have a great group going down there. So just, you don't know what will happen. And number one, number one, 
If you want a residual income in 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years, never, ever, ever quit. Because there's one thing I can guarantee you, you will never have a residual income if you quit forever. Okay. Now, I just want to finish. This was a text Brian got on New Year's Eve from a friend of his, not in the business. He could have been in the business. It's a fantastic text. But it says, to be happy in 2018, you must let go of what has gone. Be grateful for what remains. Look forward to what is on the way. And the longer you wait for the future, the shorter it will be. Isn't that a fabulous text? Folks, thank you all very much. Um, I, on behalf of Brian and myself, I want to wish you all a very, very um, happy, healthy, peaceful, and prosperous new year. Thank you all very much. Enjoy the rest of the day.